Hey, eighth graders, welcome back. Time to talk to you today about variables. Now, you've learned about the five steps of the scientific method, right? Right? Problem, hypothesis, experiment, data, conclusion. When you do your experiment, that third step of the scientific method, you need to have at least two different groups. One group is the group you're going to test something on. The other group is the group that you're not testing something on. For instance, let's say I want to know, does Mountain Dew make me hyper? Do I want to give everybody in class Mountain Dew? No, because then I won't have anything to compare it to. So here's what I would do. I'd split the class down the middle, half of you would get Mountain Dew, half of you don't get Mountain Dew. Then I would see who's hyper. I could make a comparison between the two. Now we have a name for these two different groups. The group that we test, the group that gets the Mountain Dew, we call them the experimental group. Why? Because we're experimenting on them. The other group, the one who doesn't get the Mountain Dew, we call that the control group. Why? Because I'm going to control it and make sure they don't get Mountain Dew. Two groups in every experiment. Experimental group and control group. In designing your experiment, you're going to have to use things called variables. Now you may have heard of this word in math class before, and it's actually the same thing. A variable is any factor in a scientific experiment that can change. Sometimes we're the ones who change it, and sometimes it changes on its own. Let's take a look at the two types. Let's talk about the type that I can change first. I. I. The letter I. That's a great way to remember independent variables. An independent variable is one that I change. I intentionally change this particular variable. Sometimes you might hear it called the manipulated variable, which means the same thing. If I change it, I also manipulate it. Key thing about I is there can only be one independent variable in the experiment. No more. You can only test one thing. This is the thing, again, that I am changing. So let's remember I independent variable is the one that I change. You think I've said the word I enough yet? Hmm. I. I. Let's go on to the next. When I change a variable, it's going to cause something else to change. It depends on whether or not my independent variable changes. Since it depends, we call it the dependent variable. The dependent variable, or sometimes called the responding variable, is the factor that changes because of the independent variable. This is the factor that you're going to measure or observe in order to collect your results. Now this might seem really confusing, so let's take a look at an example. Let's say my scientific question that I want to solve is, does changing the temperature of a ball affect the height that the ball will bounce. What is the independent variable, the thing that I change? Well, that would be the temperature of the ball. What depends on the temperature? What's that thing that I'm measuring? That would be the height of the ball. So temperature is my independent variable. Height is the dependent variable. Let's look at another question. Let's say my scientific question is, does changing the color of light affect a plant's growth? Now, what's the thing that I am changing? My independent variable. Can you guess? It's the color of light. I'm the one who's going to decide who gets red light, who gets blue light, and who gets maybe white light. What then depends on that type of light? In other words, what are we measuring? That is the height of the plant, how much it grows. We also, again, remember, call it the responding variable. The height of the plant is in response to what color of light it gets. Now, let's take a look at 
one more thing that has to be in our experiment. We talk about variables. Variables means we change something. But do we want to change everything? No. Some things we want to keep the same, and we call those constants. Constants are things in our experiment that stay the same for everything in our experiment. Let's take, for instance, the plant experiment. Now, they're all growing under a different color of light, which is cool. That's my independent variable. But do I want to test three different kinds of plants? Do I want to test three types of soil? Do I want to water them three different amounts? No, those all need to stay the same. Here's why. Let's say I have one plant that's really tall, one plant that's medium, and one plant that's short. This plant had blue light. So I might say, oh, well, the plant with blue light grew less, so blue light must not help plant growth. I don't know that, though. Maybe that one didn't get as much water. Maybe this one had a bigger pot. Maybe this one didn't have good soil. In order to make sure that it's really the light that is causing that, I have to make sure everything else stays the same. What do we call those things that stay the same again? Constants. All right, guys, so in your lab journal tonight, here's what I need you to write down. What's an experimental group and a control group? And what's the difference between the two? What's an independent variable? What's a dependent variable? What's the difference between those two? And lastly, but of course not leastly, what are constants? Because I'm going to constantly be bugging you if you don't get this assignment done. <laughs> Until next time, stay cool.